right, we have eight trigger boards on the tap percussion Mark 7, and they're arranged like so. One is right under my left foot, and on my other side I'm standing on number two. Just over here is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The top percussion mark seven can be used for tonal colors such as the minor pentatonic scale here programmed using steel drums. What we're doing right now is we're cutting the sheet rubber that we're going to use to insulate the trigger boards from the rails. I'm just using a fresh utility knife blade and using one of the rails as a straight edge. And then we'll get pieces like this. Right now I've laid out my boards with this thin cardboard wedge between them and this is going to keep our our boards just the right distance from each other for when we screw the rails on. It can be from a cereal box or any very thin cardboard. It's important to get the, the center one to be thinner than these boards. Right now what we're going to do is lay out the rails. I've got my thin cardboard in between this set of boards and this set of boards. I'm going to lay these together and I'm going to start marking where I'm going to put my screw holes because these are going to be screwed onto the trigger boards. And we're going to mark our spots for the screw holes. Oh, about three quarters to an inch in from the, the edges of each board. two screws for each board on each end. And now we're going to turn these like this, clamp them together and drill with bolt holes about three inches in from the end. Okay, I've clamped the two center rails together, and these are the ones that are going to hold the two sets of boards together when we assemble the piece for our performances. I'm going to go about three inches in from the end, and keeping the drill perpendicular to these rails, drill all the way through and then come down to the other end and do the same thing. We want to make sure that we don't intersect with our screw holes. The bolts have got a completely different to countersink these holes so that the screws do not dig into whatever floor you're going to be using this instrument on. So I'm just eyeballing the center of these rails. Okay, now that we have our screws 
screw holes drilled with the countersink. We're ready to make sure everything's lined up tight. I like to hit, hit, hit it with the edge here to make sure these are all lined up. We've got our cardboard in between. Make sure there's no wrinkles or anything in it. Now we have our two center rails have been bolted together through the quarter inch holes that we put in there. Then we line these up so that they're right over the center, the center line between these two sets of four boards. Because these have to touch, but these two rows of boards do not want to touch. None of our trigger boards, we don't want any of them to touch each other. Okay, now we've drilled our screw holes with the countersink bit. And now we're going to, with, with our cardboard in, in place, our cardboard spacers in place, make sure everything's lined up just how we want it, precisely. Sometimes it's helpful to just tap it with these boards on the ends, just to make sure everything's lined up straight. Make sure our cardboard's in place, especially over this center line here between the two sets of boards. Now, you'll notice that I have attached these two via these bolts. We drilled the bolt holes with them clamped to make them nice and even. And because these are the parts that are going to touch, we don't want trigger boards to touch at any point. That's the whole idea of, of uh, getting our separation and our sounds. So we make sure we have the holes lined up where we want them. The six inch boards go into these and the 12 inch boards into these. Line it up exactly over the center. Remember, the rails are going to touch, but the trigger boards will not. Now we're going to set our rubber strips here on either side. This is going to insulate and shock mount the trigger boards don't get unwanted vibrations through the rails and the trigger boards. Set these rails down like so. Over the rubber. And now we're ready to screw them in. So now that we've got these carefully laid on the rubber over the trigger boards, Lined up exactly with the center here, where the trigger boards are not going to touch. We're going to put in the first screw. Make sure everything's lined up before we do that. So 
I noticed that I had this screw tightened, but it was a little bit too loose here. So I'm going to push that together and then put it put the next screw in here. Make sure everything's tight. And uh, because I've already screwed in here, I'm going to have to drill another screw hole here and countersink it. But that's no big deal. What we're using here to actually pick up the sound of your feet and turn it into electronic sounds are these little triggers. These are called Red Hots that are made by Pulse Percussion. And these are the cheapest ones I've found, and I've found that they're very reliable. What I do is I put them on with gaffer's tape. Gaffer's tape is made so that it doesn't leave a residue. And this is important because you will be changing this tape sometimes and you don't want a bunch of gooey residue. I put the triggers about four or five inches from the rail. Tape it down with the wires heading for this side. And when we turn this thing over, that's going to go off to the right, and your drum controller will be to the right. So once I get the tape down and have it attached securely to the plywood, I come with my staple gun, staple around the trigger, not through the trigger. And then I'll put a couple of staples lightly over here to hold the wire to the board. Again, this is removable. And sometimes we do have to remove and replace triggers. So that's why they're not embedded more securely into the wood. Take the next one. Put our tape over it. Try to get tape to tape it down flat against the, as much contact with the wood as possible. These things are not perfectly flat, but they're pretty good. And then we're going to hold it down by getting the staple right up next to the edge of the trigger, which you can feel under the tape. And then do one across the wire. going to repeat this step on the other boards and then we'll do it on the second row of boards also and that's how easy that is now we're going to number the boards now that we've got them pretty much where we want them there's their uh, the rails are screwed in and the way the numbers go it's kind of tricky but it's upside down, so this is going to be where your left foot is going to be, and that's number one. Number two is here. This is three. That's where you're going to be right to the right of your main position there. This one here, oddly enough, is number eight. This one is seven, six, five, and four. When we attach the wires to your drum brain, the wire that, that goes to number one will go to the, the number one uh, trigger input on your drum brain or your MIDI interface. So now we have the eight triggers attached and We've got a couple of screws sticking out. I have got a consumer grade tool, so I need to wait for that to, to charge up before we can complete the process. But once we do that, we will attach our cables and we'll turn it over. And this is gonna be the surface. And generally, I stain these. Okay. Once we've done all our assembly with the board upside down, we're going to uh, loosen these central bolts which hold the two center rails together and we're going to correct some of the gaps that 
we have in our assembly. Notice there's a gap between the trigger board and the rail. Uh, this is okay because the most important thing is having the right size gaps in between trigger boards. So using a little shim or a little piece of wood, I'm going to apply a C-clamp to this trigger board and a rail, tighten it up, and then putting my drill on the reverse setting, I'm going to back off of these screws, one at a time. We don't have to back off too much to get what we want. I'll slide the clamp over and tighten it down so that this rubber between the boards is nice and tight. And now I'll reset the, the screw. And voila, we have this one tight. Now I'll move over here and do the same thing. First we have to get the clamps just sort of on there to hold it in position. Reverse the screw, then tighten the clamp down to our, so it's nice and snug and no play in that rubber there. Reset the drill towards in, and voila. This trigger board is now nice and tight, tight as a drum, so to speak, against this rail. And we're going to do that all the way through and then double check. This one here is sticking up a little bit, so I'm going to do this one again so that there's no abrupt edge between these two boards like there is on this one, which remains to be done. Okay, uh, now that we've tightened our trigger boards to our rails and they're tight as a drum, now we're going to just do a little bit of light sanding so that we don't get slivers when we handle the instrument. We don't want to over sand, especially where uh, our two center rails come together because we don't want any unwanted gaps or any little dips there that might catch our, the, the, uh, one of the taps when we're tap dancing. Um, but by the same token, we don't want any little slivers sticking up, so just barely sand in between these cracks here. A little bit of sanding goes a long way. And then on our outer back and front edges, I like to, to just round off these corners a little bit so that if, uh, when you handle them, they're not too sharp. So it doesn't take a whole lot of sanding to, to get this baby in shape. And it's, uh, it'll be ready for us to apply a coat of stain. And I prefer using stain than varnish because I don't like the, the board to be too slippery. And uh, the stain actually, I use a, a black walnut stain and that makes the boards the same color as the, uh, the scuff marks from the tap shoes. And then uh, we'll be ready to plug it in after that final step. All right, now we've uh, done all the construction that we need to do and we're ready to hook up the Tap Percussion Mark 7. You'll notice that the trigger boards are numbered. And starting with number one, which I almost always call red, hooking it up to a cable snake. Number two is green, like so. Number three is brown. We're going to go with number eight with the purple. In order to reach the farthest triggers, I'm using an extender, a two foot extension on triggers, trigger boards number seven and eight. Now, before we secure all our triggers, 
in their little channels here with staples. We're going to test each trigger. It's hooked up to the brain. Notice how I have red, one, green is two, black, uh, brown is three. And that's, that makes it easier for me to remember if I do it the same way every time, but it's not necessary as long as your numbers match on the brain and on the, the footboards. Four is working. I tap them gently with my fingers. Each one works fine. So to keep things nice and neat under here, or neater than this, we just gently, don't push down on it, put a staple in there to hold that to hold your wires in place and these can be easily removed all right now we we know all the triggers work they're all connected to the proper channel in the drum brain and so now it's time to do a final test with our feet I like one something with tuned percussion for this because I can hear all the different notes. programmed in some notes uh, in the key of E minor for this next piece uh, using the, the tuning on the PM16 to control the sounds that are in this computer and the Ableton software. like to do something completely different sound wise with the same programming of note numbers uh, and threshold in this PM16. So now we're going to do a different approach. We're going to take the bass drum and put it on trigger number seven instead of number one. And uh, we're going to go for a cooler jazz sound here with the snare on. Um, the snare will be still next to the, the bass, but up on number six instead of on number two. And then we've got a ride cymbal sound. 